Hi, my name is Trent Fields and I'm a Cloud Product Specialist with Informatica. Today we'll be taking a look at the Informatica Cloud Platform and the Application Integration Service. For today's use case, we'll be looking to capture messages off of a Kafka topic, performing a couple of API lookups before writing the results over to a Redshift database. For today's instance, we're going to be providing loan ID information via the Kafka topic, which we'll then look up against Salesforce. If the loan ID does exist, we'll extract the relevant information, in this case, the property address assigned to the loan, and then provide this information to the next API lookup against Zillow. Within this step, we'll go ahead and provide the property address information, and in response, we'll get the high and low evaluations for that property. Last, we'll go ahead and record this information and write it out to our AWS Redshift table. We also have a secondary process here. If the loan ID is not found within Salesforce, we'll go ahead and send an email to the user notifying them that the loan ID does not exist. Within application integration, this process can be both event-driven as well as exposed as both a REST and a SOAP API. For today, we'll look, take a look at the event-driven orchestration. I can then select the event that I want to trigger based upon. I'll look for my Kafka connection, and I can see a list of available topics that I can select to read from and trigger off of. For today, I'll select my consumer topic. Once I've selected this topic, I can see within my input fields that I'm already being provided with the event information. And additionally, within my next step, I've gone ahead and selected a Salesforce connection that we'll use within our lookup. For my next step, I'm gonna go ahead and define a temporary field. Within this, I'm just gonna extract the message body from my Kafka topic. This now becomes relevant as we point to that Salesforce connection and define the query. I wanna go ahead and run a lookup against the available fields within Salesforce, and I can see that loan ID is one of the available fields. Next, I wanna provide the loan information that I'm receiving from Kafka. This is where I'll select the Kafka temporary message that we're pulling out from the message body. I've now configured my query against Salesforce, and in the next step, I'll make a decision whether or not that loan ID exists within the environment. In the case that it does, we'll then perform a lookup against Zillow with the address information that we're extracting from Salesforce. To perform this lookup, I'll select my connection, in this case, pointing to Zillow, and I'll select the action that I wanna perform. I'll go ahead and select that I wanna get the property evaluation address. I'll see here the list of input fields that are required for me to provide. That way I can get back the output fields that are listed here below. In this case, I need to provide the property address information. I can first select the fields that I wanna provide. In this case, the field for street address will be provided back from our Salesforce lookup. I can select the property address. As well as in the city and state location, I can select both the city and state information that is also being provided back from Salesforce. Now that we've provided the necessary information, after an API lookup's been completed, we'll be provided back with both the high and low evaluations for this home. Similarly, in the next step where we wanna write this information out to Redshift, I'll define the connection that I wanna to point to, in this case, AWS Redshift, and select the table that I'd like to write to. We'll select Kafka loans. I can see a list of available fields within the Kafka loans table, and I can provide the input to those fields. In this case, I've got my loan ID, which will be coming directly off of the Kafka message, as well as the address that we're being provided back from Salesforce, and the high and low evaluations that are being provided by Zillow. The secondary step of this is if we wanna go ahead and see if the loan does not exist, that the, no the user is notified of this event. I've similarly set up a connection where I send out an email and in this case, I've sent out an email service and need to provide the necessary information such as the recipient's subject and body. I define this instance by selecting the recipients that I wanna to write to, the subject information, as well as in my body, I provide the context of what the information is that was being provided. In this case, I'm writing out my Kafka message loan ID back to the user. This is now a completed process and can be running and published. I'll go ahead and save my process and publish my process. Next, we'll go ahead and run a lookup against this instance. Today, we'll go ahead and provide information directly within Salesforce. I'm providing a lookup against a home within Austin, Texas, where the loan ID is 0202. 
we can see this information directly within Salesforce user interface. We can see that the loan ID is 0202 and that the property information is here within Austin, Texas. As you can also see, I can also write this information back into Salesforce. When the step where we wrote to Redshift, I could swap that out and write it back into the SaaS application itself, which you can see we've done here in the past. I'll now go ahead and provide this information into Kafka and type in my 0202 loan ID. Next, we'll go back into the Informatica Cloud Platform and then into the Application Integration Console. This is where we can see a list of the processes that have run. I can see here that my Kafka loan inquiry process just ran. And if I take a look at the process, I can see which route that it took. Additionally, I can see after it's been provided the information and looked up within Salesforce, I can see the fields that were provided to our Zillow lookup. I can see that the input address that was provided from Salesforce is our 2933 stock instance, and that the response was the high and low evaluations. The next step is to write that into Redshift, which we'll query here in just a moment. Additionally, if I were to take the second approach here and provide an instance of 020, which I know does not exist within Salesforce, we can also take a look at what that would recall. If we flip back over to our processes, we can see now that we've run a new instance of this Kafka loan inquiry, and we can take a look at the Pratt. In this case, I can see in the process that we went ahead and sent out an email to the user. And I can see that the information provided met with the 020 information that we provided within our Kafka topic. I can now take a look at the instance and I can see that the email was sent to the user with the loan ID information and that the loan ID does not exist. Next, we'll go back into application integration and query against the Redshift instance. Before, when we took a look at the Kafka loan process, we saw that it was an event-driven process. This one will be a REST-driven instance, where we can go ahead and query against the Red, a Redshift database. Similar to what we saw within our Salesforce query lookup, I'll providing a loan ID that will be user-defined, and then we'll look up that loan ID against the Kafka loan ID within the Redshift database. Afterwards, we'll provide a response back to the user. I'll go ahead and publish this process. And I can see within my property details that this has now been exposed as both a SOAP and a REST endpoint. And we've also included both the Swagger and WSDL definition files. I can now copy this URL and run a query against my Redshift database. I'll provide the 0202 loan ID. And I can see that I'm res the response that I get is directly from my Redshift database. You can see the loan ID, the address from Salesforce, and the low and high evaluation of the address that was provided to us from Redshift. Within a few steps, we've now been able to see the ability to not only capture a message off of a Kafka topic and perform an API lookup before recording the events within a database or in a SaaS application, as well as the ability to go ahead and then query against the API itself. In this instance, we can also define some of the API management rules around this process to see which users can be able to consume this information, as well as how we want to handle PII data. Thank you very much for following today's presentation, and I hope you all have a great day.